you know and love Ninja Theory for their intense story-driven adventures like Enslaved, DMC and Hellblade. So their new game is something quite different. And here to tell us more is creative director Rani Tucker. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Thanks. This is a lot less intense than uh, being out yeah, there. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> I don't think even I would want to do that. Um, so obviously Ninja Theory is known for kind of its single player stories and stuff like that. So how did Bleeding Edge kind of come about? Because it feels like a bit of a left turn. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think Ninja Theory's always had some combat DNA, you know, like Kung Fu Chaos, Heavenly Sword. That's the game I saw that made me want to work there in the first place. And obviously with DMC. And it just felt like, um, to me, after after DMC, to me when I made Hellblade, which is very story, character, experience focused, and that totally suits him, he's awesome at that. But for me personally, I'm way more interested in the combat, gameplay, the touch and feel. So that's the direction that I wanted to go in. And at home, I like to play kind of multiplayer competitive games. So it was just kind of the thing I like to make, the thing I like to play. Ah. And then they let you do it. Brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, so uh, we talk a little bit about the setup. Is it kind of like class-based structure? Like what's kind of going on? Let's kind of pick this apart a bit. Yeah, it is, it is kind of class-based. So there's like heavies, assassins, and support characters. Um, and there's also a mix of ranged and melee classes as well. But some of them are kind of a little bit crossover. So El Bastardo, for example, is a heavy, but he can also do quite a lot of damage. And Kulev is a support, but he can also lean a little bit into damage. So you can kind of, you can kind of lean a little bit. With, it's not so exact. Yeah, I mean, every, every fighter is so unique anyway. But yeah, we, we kind of split them into like architectural classes just so people can kind of get an idea what they're going to be doing. Yeah, no one wants them. to read a whole bunch of text at the start. Like, what does this guy do? Okay. <laughs> So um, exactly. how does the kind of mod system uh, work? So yeah, how am I going to make my particular character, like Buttercup or something, different to everyone else's? Yeah, so there's, um, there's mods in the game. Each character comes equipped with three mods. And then as you play, you earn more mods and then you can replace what's there by default with different stuff that you unlock. So the idea is that you don't get more powerful, you just get more options, like the more experience you get with the game. So for example, a character like Demon, his default kit comes with a little bit of extra health, um, I think extra damage on his katana and extra range on his shuriken and that's kind of like a good all-round set but say you wanted to go more into stealth and, and be all about stealth ninja then you could take... <laughs> just not being a stealth Exactly ninja. right, so you could take like <laughs> stealth never runs out, you could take extra speed while in stealth and say extra damage coming out of stealth and you could kind of gear him more towards that so there's there's plenty there to choose from. You can kind of mix and match them and you can think about how that synergizes with what the rest of your team is doing. So that's my next question I was going to ask was kind of like about the kind of synergies and sort of combos and stuff. Like, is there anything that we should be sort of particularly looking out for? Like what works really well together? Come on. I mean, we want to get ahead of the game here. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, there's definitely some moves that combo quite well together. You know, like the buttercup pulling a guy in and then Maeve drops her cage on top and you've sort of locked a guy down or you get Nidhogger and slide into the middle of a big team fight and drop a big ride the lightning super and it stuns everybody and it kind of leaves your team free to just jump in and destroy everyone. I mean, it, it's mad. Just, I mean, just it's complete. There you go. Yeah, it's oh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Gizmo riding in on the rocket, exploding it. I think there was like every move in that one little shot there. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, what can we expect from the upcoming technical test? What's going to be going on with that? Well, we're going to start um, letting people in on the 27th of June. Um, and then we're going to start with weekly tests and just, yeah, we're going to be just honing the game, seeing what people think, getting their feedback, and we're going to be adding more content, you know, tech, checking all the technical stuff, make sure it's robust, and matchmaking's working right, and we'll expand it over time. It all sounds really good. It looks bonkers <laughs> in the best possible way. Well, thank you. Uh, so thanks, Ronnie, so much for coming on and uh, talking to us. I personally can't wait to get my hands on it.